Well, everybody, I'm hanging out in the woods, walking around. Spring is sprung, and the leaves will slowly start coming back onto the trees, but for now, they're not. And this is the perfect time of year to see if you have invasive species on your property. And there's a gentleman that I know very well, a good friend that knows a thing or two about invasive species, Dr. Dave Coyle. Hi, good Nick. to see you, Dr. Coyle. You good doing? to see you. I'm doing great. I'm so glad to spend some time with you. Dr. Coyle is an invasive species and forest health specialist with Clemson University. He used to work at UGA. Hey, I'm still talking to him. We're still buddies. It's good. And we got to give credibility to his information, too. That's for sure. Dr. Coyle, we're standing underneath of what I think is a china berry tree. And you helped me make sure that I was standing under a china berry. This is an invasive species. This is something that the folks at home could see from the road at their farm or at their home to see that it is a china berry. And it has some of these, as you were telling me, some of these berries on here that give it away, that give it its name. What's the problem with this on property? Why is this an issue that we're talking about? China berry is not native to the U.S. So it was okay. brought over in the mid-1800s as a horticultural thing. People put it in their yards. Then it gets these fruits on here. They're a little yeah. squishy. Birds will eat these, and birds do what they want to do. They will go and spread these seeds, and uh -huh. then these things grow up all over the place. We find them on the edges of roads, on the edges of patches of woods. Okay. They're non-native species, so they're crowding out things that normally should be here, like oak trees. All right. Uh, would another be here. Sure. Oak trees would be here. These fruits are actually toxic to most mammals. We're talking dogs and We're cats. We're talking dogs, like cats, people. Okay. Okay, they're right. toxic to okay. people if you eat them. Cattle can, for some reason, eat these and be okay, and okay. birds can as well. Huh. But these trees also represent a place where there's not really any insects that feed on the leaves here. Okay. So if you're a bird looking for caterpillars to feed your young, Babies. you're not going to find any on these trees. So it wow. represents what we call food desert for birds. Huh. So this is taking up space from a tree that would provide food for birds, which is not a good thing. So what you're saying is we need to take care of these. We need to take them out, get yeah. them off our property. How are we going to do that? I mean, what are some options we have? There's some good options. For something that's small like this, we can cut it off right at the bottom and put some herbicide right on there. Okay. And herbicide, the active ingredient is triclopyr. That's okay. very commonly used. Okay. It will prevent this thing from re-sprouting and just kill it in place. Okay. We've got a tree behind us that's a lot larger. This great big one here, you're obviously not going to cut that thing down very easily and right. squirt herbicide. Right. But there's a method called the hack and squirt where we can take a hatchet cut a bunch of notches around the tree and then squirt some herbicide right in there. Look, like this? You're I mean, we just happen to have this out we in the woods. What do you know? To. What do you know? So we've got this hatchet and we've got this herbicide. And what you're yeah. saying is I would just go around this tree and I don't want to I don't want to damage this now, but I would go around this tree and hack into it. Yep. And, and then, then every time in we that would hole, squirt, put you a would squirt, squirt in that. there. And that's going to travel up that tree and kill it. Now, mm -hmm. when it becomes a dead tree, I'm a wildlife guy, and there you that's are too. Right, Isn't that a right. good thing for animals? This becomes a snag, a standing dead tree. That's right. Woodpeckers, cavity nesters are going to love that. That's interesting stuff. Yeah. So we could cut it down, spray there, do the hack and squirt method, taking care of these guys. Something we're going to want to do on our property. Now, this is one of several invasive species we're going to talk about today. We want to travel down the road a little bit and take a look at a calorie pair next that I know is near and dear to your heart. A lot of what Dr. Coyle deals with is that species. So let's travel there now. So we've moved down the road a little bit from the woods down along the road. And Dave, this is a disturbed area. I mean, this is along the roadside. It's kind of noisy out here right now. This seems like this would be the perfect place, you say, for something like we're looking at here. What is this tree and why is it so important? Yeah, this is a calorie pear. You'll see them really common in the springtime. You've got these beautiful white flowers. They come from the Bradford pear, which a lot okay. of people have in their front yards yep. along the, the roads and all that. But this is basically a Bradford pear gone wild. Okay. okay. So what we have here is you get these great big thickets. This whole patch behind us is calorie pear. Okay. One of the things it does, it crowds out everything native. Nothing really is growing in here except a couple blackberries and a bunch of calorie pear. Right. Here's blackberry. Yeah. yeah just like China berry, nothing eats it. Wow. Okay. So okay. you don't have any insects on here. If you're a bird looking for food, you're not going to find it in here at all. Okay. One of the bigger issues we have is that when these take over, they get really sharp thorns. And so you can this. see yeah. some of these right here, these sharp thorns. They will easily puncture your skin. A lot of landowners who have been trying to get rid of these have lost tires because they'll pop tires wow. on tractors, on pickups, on wagons. And we even had one farmer up in South Carolina who contacted me. They had a bunch of these calorie pairs in their pasture, and they had two incidences where horses got hurt. In one case, a couple little little colts were running around and they ran into these thorns and scratched up their face. Wow. And in another case, one of those horses stepped on one of these things 
and then ended up with a really bad infection in their foot. I just can't imagine, or a child or something running mm -hmm. along, you see these things sticking out, something very important to point out, for sure from a safety standpoint. I wanna talk about controlling these guys, getting these guys out of here. Although they're pretty, what can we do about them? Let's get our gear on, let's take care of this guy. All right, so invasive species patrol out here. Dave's already started to cut on this cow repair and take this out. I do want to point out though, I've got my gloves on, my safety glasses, and this spray with long sleeve shirt. Very, very important to use for safety. Dave's cut that guy down. Dave, I'm gonna go ahead and spray her down with that herbicide right on there. It's gonna take this guy out. This is the kind of stuff we've got to do from a safety standpoint and to keep these seeds from spraying. It's super important. Dave, I wanna check out one more invasive species with you, the privet. Let's go there next. So for all our friends at home watching maybe in a residential area, we've moved to a residential area and we're looking at something right here, Dave, privet, something very, very common, again, in a disturbed area when we've got this kind of stuff, which is so characteristic, these opposite little leaves, and this time of year, still gonna be green, right, Dave? They're gonna see these out, disturbed area. What do you recommend we do about these? What do we do to control this? In the springtime, when privet is kind of the only green thing out here, yeah. you can treat this with a foliar herbicide, a okay. glyphosate, or even a triclopyr. Go ahead and spray the foliage. You're not gonna kill anything underneath it because nothing else is growing. Okay. Whenever you're spraying stuff, be very careful that you're wearing your proper PPE, your personal protective equipment, I had it your, on goggles, before. That's right. your goggles, your uh, gloves, hat, pants, long shirt. Yeah. Don't spray where it can be over your head. You don't okay. want any of that spray to drift back into your face. Yeah. And make yeah. sure if you're spraying, it's not very windy. You want it to be a nice calm day to spray to make sure that spray gets exactly where you're trying to put it. Yeah, and I love that point. If it's windy out and we're spraying, I can just see myself out here spraying everywhere and it coming back in my face. Right back in we want to get it down here waist or below. And you're saying just spray right on the bark. In some cases, you can spray right on the bark, either the okay. leaves or the bark when you've got really thin bark. If you can yeah. scrape that bark with your fingernail yeah. and see a little bit of green, I sure can. this chemical will get on that bark and soak right in, and then the tree will take it down, the privet will take it down, and it will kill it that way. And that's great. Great to be able to control this. And look at where we've come today. From all three of these invasives, this central theme we've seen, it's disturbed and we can control it with herbicides and a little bit of cutting. Simple enough and we can do it at home. Dave, thanks so much for thanks, spending Nick. time with me today. Such a great time to be together and hanging out outside. You'll know what to do. While you're learning more about some of this, maybe online or from your county extension agent, always like to make that plug, hop on over to the Georgia Farm Monitor Facebook page, see what the guys are doing there. And while you're online, check out the Ranger Nick Facebook page. I love to check you out there. And until next time, as we always say, Dave, for the Farm Monitor, I'm Ranger Nick, reminding you enthusiasm is contagious. So pass it on. Y'all, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you back here next month. See ya.